<laughs> like your bad moments. Are we live? Oh, we're live. Welcome well, to Guys Talk sorry. Knives. We actually got the guys back in the yes. talking knives. Dos yes. guys. Dos guys. <laughs> Episode 74. Jason, welcome back. Ah, it's good to be back. I miss being here Tuesday. Me too. I miss. I bet you did. You had to talk the whole time. I did. But I wax poetic about the showroom, so. I, I mean, you know, like four minutes of I, full on waxing. It's, but here's the thing. I would still love to just go down there, and I don't have time, neither do you. Would love to go down there with the camera and just catch the people, especially this time of year when it's not quite as busy. Yeah. Who are here because this is the stop when yeah. they come in the smoke. Sure. And they plan, because we talk to people uh -huh. at yeah. my show about yeah. this, who plan their trip to come into town while we're open mm -hmm. to make this the first stop. Right. Right, people have had to adjust over the last year because we went from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. <laughs> no, that's true. That's and true. And we've had people in the parking lot all year. It's fun to watch, you know, from our little roost up in the e-commerce area, <laughs> it is fun to stand on the balcony and watch people come into the very front of the building. They're unpacking the car. They're doing all the stuff. What has been my fun the last three years on Black Friday? When they open the doors, yes. I stand on the balcony and giggle a lot. Yes. Yes, <laughs> as they come in. Yes. Guys, we're brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com. If you didn't know that already, you're watching Guys Talk Knives. This is episode 74. Um, a little bit of business uh, to take care of. I'm going to hit Jason with a question he doesn't even know I'm going to ask him. Sweet. <clears throat> Let's see. Our winner last week, it was the mini proponent, the copper? Yes. Yes. The copper proponent mini was won by Mr. Johnny Logsdon. Way to go, Johnny. I know we already have your information. Um, it'll be to you soon. Guys, go check out those mini proponents because we have them in brass, copper, and bronze. Yes. We put his mini proponent on a boat. And we <laughs> set it afloat in the middle of Douglas Lake. And it's been there since last week. It is turned into a goose. <laughs> Jason of patina. has lost his mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's goose patina. The goose. the goose is carrying it inside. <laughs> it will lay the golden... It's like a turducken, but you put the knife in the chicken and the Sounds duck and really the turkey, bad. and you patina in the turducken. I have no it's other turpina. business than that. <laughs> we'll do the normal things. We'll get to those in a second where we show you the five items that are question. on the table. But I have a question for you first. Sweet. I just... So... What is your criteria? How do you go about picking an EDC? Not Ooh. just in general, how do you go about deciding not not what you're going to put in your pocket, but what knife you want to buy that you know you're going to carry around? Because wow. I have some things in my mind that wow. I do on a regular basis. But I wanted your gut reaction to this because I think it's fun for them to understand the experience we've had in the industry and where we come from. That is such a good question. You want me to say And it is completely different then how we would pick one, say, to put in an email. Sure. Or to feature online. Yes. Or when we talk about one. Absolutely. Um, probably my number one criteria is the size of the knife is in your pocket. Okay. And I'm I'm a bad web shopper because I want to hold it. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell sometimes. It is hard it to tell It is hard sometimes. to tell something like that Launch 9 is California legal. And even still in your mind, you don't realize how small it is. Now, that being said... I know the rough size of a Benchmade. Uh-huh. Sure. And if I see a Benchmade, I'm going to go, <coughs> yeah, that, okay, yeah, that's going to feel good in my pocket. Yeah. No no worries. Yeah. If it's a new if it's a new line, mm -hmm. that changes a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I know what that's going to feel like. Right. Um, it's kind of like with a traditional pocket knife. You know what those are going to feel like. Sure. I look at pocket clip. I look at the size of the knife. Uh, price point mm -hmm. is a big one for me. Sure. Um, but I also want it to kind of look different. Is that stupid? No, no, no. You know what I mean? You were right on key with me. So my criteria, first and foremost, is uh, I shop with my eyes. Yes. I, I need to like how it looks yep. straight away. So to me, the very first criteria is how does it look? Mm -hmm. The second criteria is going to be hands-on, just like you said. Yeah. I want to know that I have the fidget spinner in my pocket. Yeah, I want For to sure. know that it has great action on it, how it flips, how it opens. Can I pop that thumb stud? Can I play with this knife? If it is a thumb stud, can I work it easily without yes. feeling weird? Yes. Yeah. Am I going to not remember like my new uh, my new cold steel? I constantly forget that it's a lock back because I have so many frame locks, sure. so many liner locks. Yes, yes. Uh, so those are my very first two. First, how does it look? 
Does it appeal to me? Is it a sexy knife? That's what I want. I want this thing that grabs my attention. Secondly, uh, how does it play, yeah. right? Yeah. And sadly, the third thing is, and it can be the killer, how well does it cut? And that's sad to me to say that when I'm choosing a knife, it is not, the, it is third on the list for me. It definitely is, and it's the exact opposite of I'm picking a kitchen knife. Right. Because if I'm picking something to work with, uh, okay, let's not even say kitchen knife. Say it's a wood carving tool. Um, say it's a tool just in general, yes. like an axe. Yes. Um, I'm going to choose that differently. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to choose something that I'm right. going to carry in my pocket that I'm going to open Amazon boxes with. Right. That I'm going to cut, you know, string or twine or cut a Barbie out of a box. Letters open, all the rest of that. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Yes. Um, that may just be a fidget spinner. Yes. Do you know the thing I don't look at almost at all? What's that? And I, I'm about to get trounced by the viewing public. What's that? Knife blade steel. Uh, me either. Me either. I, I, I know that there is I value in well-made 440A. I know that there is value in well-made 8CR. I know that M390 will hold up for years. Sure. But that is among the last choices that I make in now, a knife. If I was buying a hunting knife. Sure. A hiking knife. Uh-huh. I'm going to be way more aware of what that steel is, mm -hmm. how I'm going to care for it, and what I'm going to do with it. Yes. Because those are tools that you're going to use in an environment that you need them to perform in a way that this thing in my pocket right now, yes. This, this, th this is a simple, everyday pocket knife that I think everybody should have, and it is nothing fancy. It is sharp as, I have never sharpened this. Yeah. It is still sticky from the last thing that I cut with it, which right. was most likely a piece of fruit. Right. And it is, it is a glorious little knife. That I know exactly what it has. Do I even know what kind of steel is in this? No, it's probably sandvik. I think it is, yeah. It, it, it <laughs> might be carbon. I don't know. Right. I probably should know because then I could take care of it. If better. it was carbon and you left it sticky, it would probably start to burn. It would already have turned, yeah. But it, I was checking it out just to make sure. <laughs> um, but it, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to use this for cutting up fruit and right. opening packages. Right. It doesn't have to be S35. And I can still enjoy it just as much. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. It, that also never really plays into it for me. Um, yes, I have some grail knives that have been given to me that sure. any other stuff yes. that I treat yes. with the utmost care. Yes. But that's not playing into it. It, it is it, When I'm looking at price point, it is, it is sometimes shocking to me because I'll look at the price point and go, wow, it hit the other three, but... But it's a little, it's a little higher it's, than it's I higher than I want to spend. So, and for me, it's not necessarily that I don't want to spend that much money on a good quality product. It might be that I know I'm never going to use it to that amount of money. Right. Exactly. Question. Question. Yes. But if it's a really pretty knife, then yes. sometimes the price point doesn't matter. <laughs> it's true. It is yes. absolutely yes. true. I, you know, when they did that all black version of the 0462, <laughs> I just drooled on it. It was a two hundred dollar sure. knife. It yeah. just, I probably would not do that on a, another regular basis. I know but some I of these it. folks don't think $200 is too much to spend on no, a no, knife. No, no, And that's all relative. It is completely relative. Yes. For for me, my butt puckers around the $100 mark. I, I think, yes, when I hit that $100 mark, I start thinking about it a yeah. lot harder. I go, ha, $100, oh, what can yeah. $100 get me? But then you, you extrapolate things out like, well, that's really just uh, a few meals like a few out to dinner times a month. If I were to skip doing that, then I have this hundred dollar. Then you have it. Yes. 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 And it, you know, okay, is what else are you spending that money on? Right. right. That you could have a a nice hundred dollars again. It's a nice knife. I'm glad we're pretty close on the same page with yeah. this, though. That it just is one of those things. And I think if most people were honest about it, they might like the steel mm -hmm. for the fact that it is that steel. Sure. Sure. There's a status in S35B. It's, There's it's a status a in M39. Thing. It's a brand name thing. It's the difference between buying... Uh, my wife varies between her love of Michael Kors mm -hmm. and other purse companies. Mm -hmm. um, I hate that I even know what that is. <laughs> uh, but I can never say anything because I have as many backpacks as she has per right. purses, so you know who cares. But she varies as to which one she digs. Mm -hmm. She realizes full well that it's not that different. Right. But she likes the design, right. she likes the functionality, she likes the look, and she likes the name. Right. 
Same thing with shoes. Yes. I like Doc Martens. Right. Will any other pair of shoes still allow me to walk across the room? Yes, it will. <laughs> but I really like Doc Martens. And, and then that's the way it is. The cool thing about, I think, this industry is there is something for everyone from uh, all the way from a, a $10 knife all the way yeah. to a $1,000 knife. And that you can appreciate all of them. Yeah. And it, on some level, the functionality for an everyday carry is the same. Mm-hmm. Unless your everyday is very extreme. Sure. No. If your everyday, yep. if you are a, okay, if you are a, um, a, a let's say you're a guide on a, a river, a whitewater river. Yeah. Okay, your everyday just got more extreme. Yes. And your everyday carry changed. Yes. Does it mean it pushes you into a $300 range? No. No. But it might mean what you carry is different right. than what I'm going to carry. Right. If, if I'm the guy uh, receiving in the warehouse all day long and all I do is cut up boxes, yeah, uh, then, dude, that's I need a knife that's going to hold up over a long period of time. But if you're me, I sit behind a desk with a computer. To, yeah, exactly. I don't need that. And when people send us cookies, we got to get the cookie to cut the cookies over. <laughs> Any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, now that we've rambled for the last five minutes? It was it's good, though. Uh, yeah, no, I like it. The comments have been generally agree. However, Jason Harrington pointed out that the hat matching of last week is broken. Oh. Did we match last week? Apparently you matched last week. It was this I, one. I had this hat on. Jason says y'all matched? Jason, stop eating the mushrooms. <laughs> I, Come down. I don't know that you even have one of these. Do I you? don't. I do. I never wear it. Yeah. Because I, I don't like the structured. Like the, the structured I don't like the structured top. I like unstructured. It goes on my bald head better. Especially in the winter. This is my winter version. You'll see me back to the truck or back when it gets sure. warm again. Because uh, my head gets frozen. Well, if we had bald. enamel pins, I'd be wearing an ivy cap with a pin on it. <laughs> Tyler won't get me a pin. <laughs> Let's jump into these and talk yes. about what's on the table. Uh, starting off with, look, it's an artisan. Look, mm. it has metal handles. Look, it's, I think this one's bronze. It's bronze. This is the bronze Hyperion. Oh. This is brand stinking new. Yes, it is. Uh, and of course, like all the rest of the artisans out there, it has the ceramic ball bearings. <laughs> uh, it flips like a mother. Mm, mm, mm. So, can I? Do you love anything more than walking past that artisan counter? Uh, and especially when there's new stuff keeps filtering into it. Yeah. And it's, but that the the okay. So coming to the studio, we have to pass the artisan counter. Well, yes. we don't have to. We we choose to. I guess you can go around it if you wanted to. <laughs> but you passed the artisan counter. Um, I was actually talking to, to Nicholas a few minutes ago. Down there. And it... You just have this, this vertical case that is nothing but copper and bronze and brass. And it's yes. all shiny and pretty in there. And you're just yes. drawn to it like a moth to a flame. And you pretty much can only get them from us. <laughs> yes, indeed. They're Let's look at this one up close. And hit Love it. On it. So... This is the Artisan Cutlery Hyperion in bronze. Um, it is a four inch D2 clip point blade. Most, most artisans are D2, and I, I tell you, if you're just looking for a workhorse of a knife, D2 is, is one so of my at, faves. At, at the low end, at the low end, at the low end, at the, low end, at, all at the entry level, all, almost all of them are D2. Yeah. But what's cool about Artisan, again, is that you can, you can go jump up, up. You can go as up. you want. You know, you can get that proponent in titanium and M390. Yes, you can. You're gonna pay $210 mm -hmm. for it. Really bad. No, it's really it's not for that. Let's jump back down here. Uh, to sorry, this. that's okay. Uh, sag finish, point uh, one one inches thick, manual flipper, ceramic ball bearing, just like all artisans are. Uh, bronze handles, liner lock, ambidextrous step up pocket clip, lanyard hole, five inches closed, nine inches overall, four point nine ounces, and of course, it's available in copper and brass for the same. It's sixty dollars, and they're the cap, copper, the brass, and the bronze are all sixty bucks. This is a big knife. I'm not going to lie. This is one of the complaints about this knife is that it is big. It is a big stinking knife. It is not as weighty as the tradition. It is not. Yeah. But if you're looking for a full-size EDC, huh. it's a, it's it, a it is a full-size EDC, no yeah. doubt whatsoever. It feels fantastic in your hand. Um, I... Again, as you know, we are we are proponents. <laughs> we are proponents. We're proponents of the the metal handles anyway. Mm -hmm. To me, that has a very very classic look to it. Mm -hmm. um, and this Hyperion has a really nice look just in general. Good good clip point blade. Um, just got a good feel to it. 
It's just like a. It, it is a large folding hunter. Yep. That's literally it really what it all is. it is. That's what the Hyperion is. And it's going to patina. It's going <coughs> to change color over time. You can, you know, of course, look online. You can accelerate that in different ways and different methods. Mm-hmm. Um, the funniest one that I've seen is, of course, the banana in a bag with a knife. I didn't know this was a D rocket design. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. The, the entire Hyperion line is nice. Yeah. Some cool stuff right there. Do you know what I want them to do? What's that? A mini Hyperion. Uh, I would not put that out of the realm of artisan. Yeah, they're pretty good. Really, really cool. Uh, If you haven't been on the site in a while, looking at the artisan stuff out there, there's some minis that you haven't seen yet. Mini shark is out there, and and the mini archeo is on its way. Oh, Mm -hmm. I almost want a mini corsair, but I think that takes the fun out of the corsair. (laughs) Little cutlass. Flink, flink. No, I think that's great. I think it'd be great. I think that would be the perfect little mini Corsair. That would be kind of cool. It, it's bigger than you think it is in your hand. It Yes. No, it completely is. Yeah, you think of that knife as small, and then you get it in your hand, and you're like, oh, that's a medium size no, to full size a, yeah. EDC. It's, 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 it is not small. It's perfect. It's just the shape of that blade. That, to me, is not out of the range of being too big. One of the things I like about it is how slender yes. that handle is. Yes. And it's true for a lot of the artisans, artisan line. Yes. It's really, really small. Yes. So it kind of, even though it's this big beefy knife, it kind of disappears in your pocket. And if I were to ask you how much this costs today, how much would you tell us? Sixty this bucks. Hyperion cost. Jonathan, come on, man! He jumped again. He's guessing. He's guessing. He's trying to He's anticipate. Guessing. I was just doing this. Fancy. You can't anticipate this. Can I do this right here? <laughs> Look, I can go right here though. There we go. And then I can go right here. Oh, look at that. He 60 is bucks. back there, eyes rolling. I he can is. see it. 60 in bucks. In my head. Yeah, 60 bucks. 60 bucks on something new. Those are brand new. Most of that of those exclusives with us are around that $60 range. Yeah. Which means you can jump into a proponent, which is usually a little higher than that, for $60. Yeah, and the mini proponents are $60 as well, guys. We we tried to get those prices down to that. Trust it's me, just, like, is what it is. To the point that we were both talking to Josh and purchasing and Tyler going, but they could be, and they were like, away. Yeah, <laughs> sixty bucks is what they they're going to be out for what's in the knife and, and yeah. the exclusivity of it exactly. and all of that. So, uh, still very much worth it. That's something for new sure. for today. Yeah, the next knife we have, we did this on National Knife Day. We yes, gave we one of these away, <clears throat> and I wanted to bring it back because I really love the action on I think this as knife. Fast as it can be, isn't it? It really is. This is the Boker it's Plus rocking. Gemini NGA. Yeah, and it is just a thumb stud opener. It is assisted open, and you just don't. As fast as you can be. just have to barely get we on that. We also had those stud. on sale at one point during Christmas. the holidays. Yes, yes, we sure did. Yeah, let's look at it. So Boker Plus, uh, in the Boker Plus line, you'll see a lot. If you go type in Boker Plus, you see a lot in that Boker Plus line. This is the Gemini NGA, uh, 3.5 inch VG10 black coated drop point blade. It's an eighth of an inch thick, assisted opener with dual thumb studs. Uh, we can both actually use the thumb studs. Who would they are perfectly placed. They really are. Uh, rubberized handles with textured inserts, which they, they're very, very grippy. Grippy, yes, yes, yes. You can almost feel like a. it is grippy enough that you feel it. It wants to have a tackified, and then this is hard enough and textured enough that it grabs the middle of your hand. Exactly. Uh, tip down pocket clip, 5 inches closed, 8.25 inches overall. It weighs right under 4 ounces, and it's available in tan as well. And the tan and the black, which this is the black, are 40 bucks. Yeah, not bad at all. No, not bad at all. Um, I just, I, this, remember I said at the beginning of the show, fidget spinning? Yeah. This is it for me. I would wear out the spring in this. It's fidget spinning it. I think you believe you would. It's going to take you a long time. It's going to take a long time, sure. It's just like, it is the concern in your photographer. Yes, shutter. When you first read about shutter, mm-hmm. wear and go, what, I only have 500,000 shots out of this? And you start, you know, thinking about it. And then you just can't. And, you just then, can't. and then one day. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> you hear your mirror fall yeah, into your camera. It does. It's very sad. <laughs> and you tried it. You do. You do. You, Especially you if you're like on a gig. It's not yes, good. Yes. Um, <laughs> we've both done this. I have we? done this, yes. Um, At a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. Yes. That's horrible. Uh, <laughs> I haven't done it on a wedding. Uh, oh, it happened to me on a wedding. <laughs> that sucks. Right to the backup camera. I, that's why you have a backup camera. That's right. Camera. Of course, his backup camera was a Polaroid from 1960. That's right. Clink! Everybody hold still. We'll get the next one in a second. He was shaking it like a Polaroid picture. Oh. But. Uh, Thank you, Andre 3000. I know, right? It's going to take a long time 
to wear out a spring on this or like on a, on a, a Microtech or a, any any out the front or any automatic. Any of the speed It's going to take a long, long time. It's going to take you a long, long time. I mean, but yeah. we both still have from that original line sure. of leaks that will work of from leaks and stuff 15 years ago. Still, yeah. 15 years ago? Go. Whatever. <laughs> Check your age, sir. But no, the, that thumb stud's in the perfect place. Feels good. It is very much a fidget spinner and just as fast as it can be. 40 bucks. I love that handle. I would carry that oh anywhere. EDC. Gosh. Yes. No, it's surprising. And and I tell you, this piece here, to me, keeps it from sticking in your pocket. Yeah. I don't know mm -hmm. that's what they intended. I did not notice that till just now. Did you notice that the backspacer matches? Look here to Jonathan. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I did not notice that till just now. So your back spacer, spacer, your back spacer matches. But this this nice, more tactile piece right here and on the back keeps that from sticking in your pocket. Yep. So you don't have to worry about the rubberized portion. You know, like pulling up a pair of slacks. Forty bucks. Yeah. Great knife. All day long, black or tan. Dig it, dig it, dig it. Yeah, yeah. We sold a lot of those around Christmas. Pocket Before candy. All oh, tradition. Yeah. Got the GEC today. I really dig that pattern too. It's, it's the gunstock. The gunstock. Yeah, no, this is really, really nice. We haven't ever talked about the gunstock. Do we know any history on that? I don't have any history I on it. It is up. literally just shaped like a gunstock. It is, yeah. Yeah. I'd love to know when that came out. We'll have to do that at some point and talk yes. about that pattern. Because it's not one you see a lot of either. No, and it is uh, probably not among the most popular of patterns, but it allows you to do some things that uh, you couldn't do otherwise. So, like, uh, for instance, um, a lot of your old uh, bartender knives and the things like that would have a uh, a gunstock, a gunstock style handle. Whether they called it a gunstock sure. at that point or not, it allows you to put another pivot into a corner and have, say, a corkscrew or something else like a lobster. Oh. So it's giving you a double wide handle to okay. put an extra pivot in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> she was so interested. But it gives you... So, I was waiting so, for her to go, you're wrong. Like, no. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know what a lobster is, but a lobster has blades that open both sides, and they have to be tall enough to accommodate the springs on the inside. So one folds okay. out this way, one folds out that way. In this scenario, we just have... make room for the back springs. We just have one set of springs. Uh, so when you want to put something special on a knife, you need extra bolsters. So these gun stocks let you do that. In this particular case, you just have a very large clip okay. point as the main, and it gets closed up nice sure. and easily in this gun stock. Do you have a question? I do. It's my question. Okay. So could you put another pivot on the other end and put in two other blades? Like a... It would have to be fully double wide to get what you're after. So think of a, um, so if you look closely like at a Victorinox Swiss Army knife, sure. where the scissors are and the awl are, yeah. they sit at the very edge. Yeah, no, okay, yeah. Right, right, so they're hinged and pinned, they're hinged and pinned right there. It's really not working on a back spring. Okay. Right? No, yeah. Because those yes. pop down straight, right? Sure. They're just locked in with force here. Yeah, probably with just, whatever you're using. Yes, and that lockup is there, but you'll the, notice... All the corkscrew... Yes, yeah. all the ones on the other side. Gotcha. Yes, so your blades are on top, they're working on back springs. I did, I never realized that was why. I figured this out by trying to do one. I was wanting to do a, a particular pattern and develop a pattern for a new line of Rough Riders that we're okay. doing that would open from both sides, and to do that became next to impossible without really enlarging this. Because you'd almost have a coke bottle at that point. It would have to be all the way across in this scenario. And then you have the idea that you have a back spring on top and a back spring on bottom. I know that. Okay. That, it but starts it makes to blow your mind. Sense. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's very cool. <laughs> this one is just accommodating a large clip. Let's have a look at this. Well, <laughs> you hurt my brain. <laughs> so this is the Great Eastern Tidiot. 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 Uh, that's T I D I O. I'm going to start over. T I D I O U T E, if you're ever looking for it. 441218 Gunstock. Uh -huh. um, and of course, we'll have a link up for us. 1095 carbon steel blades, satin finish, half stops, OD green linen micarta, which turned out really, really cool. Yeah, it's a deep, it's deep, a green. deep green. It's almost yeah. a hunter to me rather and than a mossy. OD. Yeah. Um, mossy. Mossy. <laughs> uh, brass pins and liners, <laughs> brushed nickel silver bolsters, a 3 inch clip point, a 2.4 inch pin blade. It is 3 16 inch inches thick, 3.5 inches closed, 6.5 inches overall with that main blade open all the way. Um, and it is 
3.15 ounces, made in the USA by Great Eastern. Um, and again, like all Great Easterns, is this a limited production run? No. Is this a one-time run? No. They just don't make many of them. It's a small batch. Pretend it's a bourbon. Pretend it's a really good bourbon. It's a small batch pocket knife, and who knows if they ever show up again. Yeah, and the thing is, the, the walk and talk is nice. Yeah. You can hear it. You can hear it click in. Uh, you can feel it on the pull. I would say the pull's about a seven or an eight uh, on this. This is just a classic plastic, and their plastic knife. Yeah, their packaging is cool and like come with a tube. They they're in a tube and they're wrapped in in heavy wax paper and mm -hmm. they're just they're really groovy. Um, and I I I'm always kind of like I like the patterns you don't see a lot. Yeah. Am I stupid? Yeah. yeah. That's that's me. It's I fun. am. And, and, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Um, Here's the here's for me. Here's the highlights on this knife. It's a gunstock. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. You don't see them much. Yep. Um, Case will do a few. Yeah. Every or is it in the vault right now? I don't have a clue whether they're good. I have not. Oh. I have not personally seen a Case gunstock in a while. In a long time. Matter of fact, the only place I think I've seen them, Melina, is in the collectibles, right? The Case gunstock. Yeah. The, 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 the gun Case stock. gunstock. I haven't seen a Case gunstock in a long time. No. Yeah. She knows something. <laughs> Evilness that she is. Um, and also, and we talked about this the other day, look at that shield. Notice that there is nothing on it. Yes. It is a That shield. plane shield is super hot right now. It um, really is. It is traditional. Uh, well, what Great it's Eastern not has... there. Rub your finger over that. I know. Yeah. That shield doesn't exist. Yeah. Tactily. Yeah, I know you've got... I can feel that pin just yeah. a little bit. But that shield? But, yeah, it's nice. Gone. Um... Those are the two things on that Come night. Come down that here to Q again. Me. We'll talk about this. They've done pretty good with blade centering on this. Yeah, they have. Um, but it really doesn't matter if you look Which at this I blade. Is if you look at this blade, it's not actually channels, rubbing, right? but it is to the left, just a little bit, even on this GEC. You can see the main clip moves to my left, your right, uh, and goes that way. But there's no rub on it. The function gets it out to be perfect in the right cutting position. And on that one, a little easier because you have two completely separate channels for the yes. knives. Right? Yes, you're not trying to you're not trying to hammer a blade over like in a serpentine stockman yeah. where you've got two. Where they've fit. all got you got to fit four they, blades into one little area. Yes, yes. Ah, that yeah, way cool. Uh, okay. Great Eastern has made bank on just flat out. Just if you don't know, they've made yeah. bank on going back to traditional old patterns that yes, nobody has seen in a long time. Yep, and making them new. Using new materials and all of really that, cool. and, and that's that's what they're doing with this. What was the price point on this? Oh, we didn't even talk about that. Sorry, we we're like all oh, just in grazed by the knife. Uh, ninety three forty two. Ninety three forty two. I will also say this, like he said before, uh, we don't get a lot of these. No. Like, we just don't. So if you want one, you probably want to get on it. Yeah, they are in and out the door pretty fast. That's I, way cool. I wax poetic about the bug out Tuesday, and I did that because it has yeah. really grown on me. And this bailout that is going to be our uh, premium of the week is brand new from Benchmade. And this one has grown on me as well. I'm telling you. Uh, I don't know if it's as big to me as the, if, if I like it as much as the uh, bug out, it's a little bigger of a knife. But we've got these in stock and they are brand new. It is the, the Benchmade bailout with the woodland green aluminum handles. I'm like you, the bug out had me until about two or three months ago. And the more I played with a bailout, the more I thought, no, 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 I like them both. Maybe I want two. <laughs> I think I can almost hit the highlights on this one by myself do it, man. right here. Let's do it. So uh, the bailout, it has, that's M4 steel in there, isn't it? Super uh, yes. steel. Super steel. Brand new to the bailout. They've put yep. M4 super steel on this thing. It's got the uh, gray Cerakote finish on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to last forever on top of that. It's a tungsten finish. Is tungsten nice? is, is one of the things they use in like uh, drill bits and coal mines. Nice. It's got the dual thumb studs and the axis lock. So this is really easy to open, really easy to close one handed. You can swing it open just like the bug out. You can flick it open with a thumb stud. You can drop it closed with the axis lock. Yeah. The handles are T6 aluminum mm -hmm. they are woodland green and I thought for sure when we brought this knife out that it was not going to have any grip to it at all because no, of that aluminum I'm handle. telling you it you can actually hear that almost yeah I can. yeah no that's it's ridiculous it, it, you can feel that it has the integrated glass breaker lanyard uh, lanyard hole spacer in the back right there yeah. it has a deep carry ambidextrous 
mini, mini pocket clip, so it's small. Yep. You don't even hardly see this on the outside of your pants. Uh, the only thing that I don't have is the blade thickness and the measurements there, Jason. Uh, so it's uh, 3.4 inches on the blade. That's the length of the blade. It is 4.7 inches closed. Um, it is 8.07 inches overall, and the blade is 0 .09 inches thick. Yeah, no. I just really like this knife. You know what's crazy? What's that? It weighs less than this. Yes. By a few ounces. Yes. Less than this. Yes. Boo. Did you see that? I didn't, I didn't no, not a few ounces. A few ounces. By like half an ounce. Yes. There it is. That is that the is, bailout. It is so... Question. Yes. So, Donnie Hawkins uh -huh. is downstairs in the showroom, and yes. he wants to know if we can go down and say hi. After the show? Yes. Sure. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, tell him. Donnie. We'll come say hi. We'll come say hi after the show. <laughs> <laughs> but first, you must go on a quest. You must find us a shrubbery. <laughs> cut it with a hat. <laughs> you must cut down the tallest tree in the forest with We are the knives. We are the knives, knives who say me. me. We were formerly the knives who say wiggy, 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 put twang. Bang. <laughs> well. Till we grew up in the same generation. Well, <laughs> Donnie, yes, we'll come find you. Yes. <laughs> With your shrubbery. Actually, um, when you see the show end, if you'll go hang out at the artist encounter, we'll walk right past Yeah, you. perfect. Nicholas Pyatt is working at the artist well, Yeah, have Nicholas. a long chat with Nicholas. And he'll put us out. Yes. <laughs> yes. We're hard to miss. Um, just look for the two different hats. hats. Yes. <laughs> I mean, because other than that, we're pretty much identical. Yeah, otherwise you'd, you know, you'd mistake twins. us for twins. That's right. <laughs> As if we were Schwarzenegger and DeVito. Um, <coughs> I think I like both of us resemble one of those people more than the other one. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. Does it have a glass breaker on the end? It does. Yes. I said that. It was integrated. Integrated glass breaker. You can... It's little tiny, little yeah. tiny carbide nub there on the end. Yes. Right on the, the lanyard slot. I like how slender this is. Yeah. Talk about a knife that disappears in your pocket. It's a very deep carry. Really, all you have sticking out is the lanyard and the glass breaker. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. It's it's nice. You haven't cut anything yet. I know. I'm going to. Let's Do it. Happen. Get on it. Let's see that Jeez. that super steel. There we go. Super sharp, super steel. Super steel! They do a pretty darn good job of sharpening up yeah, anything. Whoa! That was very close to my finger. Did you see how close that was? Yep. Yeah. Thought you were gonna lose some skin there. Somebody always says on the on Until the comments Donnie, that I make somebody a... uh I make them nervous with my cutting. Until Donnie to go find a band-aid. <laughs> <laughs> have... just put pressure on the wound. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. Uh the Tanto lets you get stabby stabby with it pretty darn Donnie. easy. Super strong. Just a great little knife. And again, I'm like you. I think I like it as much as the Bella. I, I think that it's a great follow-up to the bug out. I think it is too. Yeah. I bug out sorry, I said Bella. No, you're fine. It's and okay. we've got we've got that one in a lot of different patterns and designs. And because this one is M4, and because it is the new Woodland, and it's brand new from Benchmade, you're talking about two hundred twelve fifty. Yep, a little bit of money. <laughs> Dear you, sir. A little bit of money, um, but you're getting you know a nice what three and a half inches of super steel. It, it's why I stuck at the. A premium. lot of technology. Just a good feeling knife. It's nice. I dig it. This one's fun. This yeah, is, is. this is the smile maker part too. <laughs> Ding. Yeah, I did the. Uh, you, you guys haven't seen this one yet. It's coming. I did the uh, get to the point on this one, and I threw it across the table. You really? <laughs> I did. It jumped right out of my little hand. Shocked me. We kept it in the video just for you. Uh, this is the launch nine in black. Yes, it is. The party party nine. Kershaw launch nine in black. It is one point eight inches of CPM one fifty four drop point blade. What does that mean? It means that it is California legal. Yep. Um, it has a working finish. Yeah, I, I don't know what that exactly means. It looks stonewashed to me, but it, it's working. It's a new finish that Kershaw's doing. This kind of like that. It's kind of their version of of hammered or forged or oh. a little bit dirtier than said. Dirty. Dirtier than satin. Yeah. That was it's the name a, of my first book. Well, eighth, an eighth of an inch thick. Push button out the side auto. Has a recess button, so there's no need for a lock yeah, or anything on it. That almost goes away in profile. T6 aluminum handles. Ambidextrous tip-up pocket clip. 3.25 inches closed. 5 inches overall. It weighs 1.5 ounces. So not only is it under 2 inches long, it is under 2 ounces in weight. And it is made in the USA. And it is fast. All of these launches I think they are. should make that TSA legal, too. 
TSA, I'm sure we could just get on the plane with this. Sure, could you take off your shoes, but your pocket knife, your uh, out the side auto is fine. But it's under two inches and two ounces. Okay, well then fine. You can That's it right. Does it have any liquid in it? <laughs> no? What a silly question. <laughs> I love that Kershaw puts ambidextrous pocket clips on their automatics. Automatics. Yeah. Nobody else does that? Nope. And they have, and you can tell they did it on purpose. Yes. It wasn't just, well, put the holes over there. Somebody wants to right. deal with it and deal with it. That pocket clip is a little bit shorter. Yep. Um, you still have room enough for the for the flag on the side. Uh-huh. It just is a it's a, a well designed, again, very these, these small just EDC. Make me smile. Yeah. You, you want to talk like we talked about being fidget spinning? This is it. It is in your pocket. You don't know it's there. Yep. You can freak people out like in a many many ways. Like. There's some real oomph to that knife, too. It really is. I mean, there's that is a serious spring in that knife. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of jumping on the back end, so if you needed to bear down to cut up on a very small <laughs> package. You need that to get into a squirrel. No, you can do that. Easy. I know. And quickly. How long does the you blade have to be to kill a squirrel through the rib area? <laughs> Are you talking minimum or maximum? Because maximum, there is no maximum. Minimum. Minimum. Uh... <laughs> Like two Half an inch. <laughs> if you punch the squirrel real hard, <laughs> I'm about to say it depends on the force behind it. But I, I really, <laughs> you can feel the the spring on that when you close it. That is so. That's choice. That segues into Melina's pick. Cool. Wait, wait, we didn't do a price on this man. Didn't do a price? When? Yeah. He waits forever to do the price. Don't you know this show? I Sometimes when I put them out there, you forget that I put it out there. Okay. Eighty nine. Mm -hmm. Eighty-nine ninety-nine. Eighty-eight ninety-nine. Yeah, just eighty-nine dollars, basically. Yes. Yeah. Less a penny. I dig it. Okay, she's got a Molina's pick. We have not seen what she is about to put on the table. Will this stab a squirrel in the lung? Will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. This is what you have to keep the squirrels from using at the park. <laughs> I'm telling you, I think I took this off of a squirrel one time. Uh, he was an angry squirrel. Yeah, he was holding the rest up for corn. That? It's a micro. It's a little tiny knife. <laughs> I love it, Manny. Oh, goodness. Look at, Look at this. It's got I want to show you just so I can give you a reference. This is the GEC in comparison to that. And here's the Closed, thing. it is the size of the shield. It really is. <laughs> it really is. The thing is, it, it's it's a real working slip joint. It's not a fake thing. Look at that. that is it so stops cool. halfway. With is this like smooth bone handles? Yes. Is this one of the Rough Rider micros? Yes. Because apparently we hate whoever makes those because you know when that came through they were like, oh, I hate those people so much. This is that is such a small piece of bone to have to deal with. I can't get it. You can't open. even open it. I cannot open it. Would you like me to open it for you? No, Dad. I can do it myself. I got it. That's a little harpoon style blade. Look at yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Molina, shout out what this one's all about. I need some pricing. I need something else. She did, she did not provide the appropriate That's notes. The line. I did not make a list. That's the Rough Rider Micro Mini. It is, a, a, I don't know, teeny. Cost about 10 bucks. <laughs> this is the way we should do the show from now on. We'll just go like, uh, <laughs> this is a Boker NGA. It's big. It's big. It flicks hard. Uh, it's, it's about like 30 bucks, maybe. It's more than 35, less if than If you 60. like sort through all the Boker Plus, you'd find this one. <laughs> it's just one link. It's one of the smallest of the small series. <laughs> it is a link to smkw.com. Go look for it. <laughs> 28,000 The thing is, I bet it has been sharpened as well. Probably so. There it is. I found it. She all found right. it. I navigated our website and found it. Yay! <laughs> Let's Look. Not get past the blade. It's actually, I lied. I said two times as much as it is. It's five dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. <laughs> what a great little thing to stick on your keychain, though. Oh, yeah. What a great little thing to make earrings out of. <laughs> For real? No, you could. You, you could, could easily do that. Get you a couple Nose little ring. sterling silver Just hoops. hanging right here. It's one inch closed. One inch and closed. And maybe two inches overall. Wow. That is teeny. It's amazing. We carry these in different colors and different styles, too, yeah. which is kind of cool. We have micros and minis in these traditional slip joints, and they are all working knives. It's amazing. You should see the little guy that has to sharpen that. Okay. I'm telling you, the people who have to make these hate us. 
Because you can you imagine these rolling off the assembly line and they go, you know, it's just, and it's 15 pieces and somebody's just like, <coughs> I hate them so much. I can't stand. And they're over there, you know, magnifying glasses and they're, they have the big glasses where they're like steampunk and they, all the little lenses flip down in place and they're like, but let's check blade centering. <laughs> That, that's it's there. Pretty, that's pretty darn good. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty darn good. Fit and finish. I'm not filling any edges. Mike, the guy at the factory who I'm calling Mike, he... That's his American name. He went blind. <laughs> he went blind. He made a thousand of those, and now he's out of work. Oh, that's just fun. Well, you remember last week we had the Giganto. Oh, yeah. I see what you're doing yes. here. Yes. I like it. Your $5 rough rider. You could take that. You could take that and slide it inside the fat bastard. Fat bastard wouldn't even know that it's there. That's right. I like that. Yeah. Nice. Questions, Can comments. Can we that the little bastard? Concerned the little bastard. <laughs> I actually do have questions. Okay. When will the new spider coats be up on the website? As soon as we can possibly get them. Yes. Uh, what flavor of drink do you have, Jason? It is a uh, pineapple coconut. Ugh. Cherry limeade. <laughs> we both swapped up from the Black Mary Lemonade. Yeah, because they were out. They were on the end cap. Were they? Yes. We got one that was unwrapped. Wow. We both, when my wife and I get to the place where we buy our drinks, and there's none there, my wife usually goes, damn it, Andy. <laughs> I have literally pulled up with a cart to see them digging these off the shelves, not knowing that he's actually there. I got to put my blackberry lemonade back. The best is the time that I took and I shoved it further back on the shelf. That's right, because I'm tiny. <laughs> now to climb up, I am not afraid to climb a shelf. And Just Laura saying. went, no. <laughs> Bad. Yes, question. They want the Rough Rider Nanny for the giveaway. That might happen. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. What, yeah. what other questions, comments? Whoever wins it has to wear it around the neck for a week. <laughs> sure. catching up next. Or his earrings. What did you bring in your pocket? We'll do that while she finds so, other questions. I actually brought two things. Occasionally, this really has started to just stay in the car. Nice. Um, I love this neck knife. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the new one? Yes. It's on the website. It'll be on the show next week. It will be. Yes. There is. Uh, there's several new styles of the minimalist. And if you've ever considered a neck knife and you thought, oh, I wouldn't wear one of those, you're probably wrong. Go buy one of these. They're very inexpensive and I love it. Hmm. It's funny you have a CRKT because I did my crossbones again oh, today. Roll. I haven't put that in the pocket in a while. Yep, that and the open L one pocket today too. Yes, nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Another one that if you haven't ever bought one of these, go buy an open L. Yeah. Add that, you know, see what it's all about. Somebody yeah. asked that in the in the group this week about, uh, I don't understand what's the glory of the open L. Number one, tradition, <laughs> simplicity. It's a locking blade. Yeah. It's super slicey. It's very sharp. That blade is super, super thin. Mm -hmm. So anything you want to cut, here, put it back. Just, Let's look at the, yeah. Let's look at those side by side. So look, yeah, my crossbones here is actually thicker yeah. than his open L. The, the open L, I'm telling you, there's something very, very nice about the simplicity of the locking mechanism, the ease of use. It is not a fast knife. You're not just going to, you know, there's no thumb stud. There's no flipper. That'd be kind of cool. Um, you know, it is a simple pivot in the wood at the top. There's, there's nothing super, you know, techy about this knife. But it is uh, very groovy, very sharp, and lots of fun. So let's go back to what we talked about at the very beginning, because I put this in my pocket today, sure. not thinking about that question, but literally, I saw this knife, I was like, that is awesome. It is all sure. the things that I like about an EDC. It is that long, skinny, upswept blade. It's just really pretty on the eye. Next thing I did is grab it in the showroom. Mm -hmm. The action is amazing yep. on this little knife. And I will tell you, I have not cut very much with this at all. So I don't sure. even really know. It rides in the pocket easy. Uh, exactly I think right. I took it to Christmas a little bit and was cutting open boxes sure. here, but it. The, the Open L, <coughs> there is history. There is, you know, there's something very, very unique about it. Mm -hmm. And when you pull that out to cut something, people go, what the heck is that? Yeah. And everybody wants to play with it then. Yes. And nobody knows how to work the, the, lock, the collar lock at the top. <laughs> uh, so it's a, it's a conversation piece. This, I literally just wanted to see what the rage was about a neck knife after talking to Fultz, Fultz yeah. at Blade Show. And 
when he said that he was a kayaker and he designed it for that, I went, no, I get it. I yeah. completely get it now. No, that's yeah. cool. Questions, comments, thoughts? And both were cheap. Yes. Well, they asked, are we going to carry the minimalist cleaver? To which I said, yes. Okay. It's already up. I yep. linked them. They asked. I heard uh, gnomalist, which would be really uh, cool, like a little gnomalist. <laughs> <laughs> they asked, when is Case released in the 2020 knife? From the vault. Very uh, that's, soon. Yes, they're announcing that really soon. Yeah. Really very, soon. Very, very soon. Yes. So, that's the... We all know. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> we were sworn to secrecy by... Him. Yes. Maury Gumfuddy by Ford. Gumfuddy Ford. He threatened us. <laughs> he said he'd bring the he gum and the steel. funny. <laughs> and was like, I will cut you like a meat chew. <laughs> that rhyme doesn't even tend it. <laughs> You like a meat chew. We are brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com, the world's largest knife store. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Giveaways are there. Yes. Every single week. What is this week? It's a case. It's the red cure, yes, uh, the cure knife. Yeah. yeah, the butter bean. Baby butter bean. It's a cool knife. Very yeah. pretty knife. You have two chances to win that. It's going up on both places. That's a stupid question. Yeah. Baby butter bean and canoe. Is it just a difference in size? It is. The butter bean, the baby butter bean is a little bit smaller. Right? Yes, yes. Well, no, it's a, I guess it's substantially They just smaller. don't call their canoe a mini canoe. They call it a baby butter. Okay. Bean. Gotcha. Um, I like to show my ignorance sometimes. Oh, no, it's fine. In the industry that I'm in. <laughs> um, I know you, at least, have held the Jumbos. Yes. How does it compare to the regular? It's huge. Yes. I, I'm just not yes. even going to lie. It it's is the exact knife. same knife. It is just big. The action is just as good. It's Jesus. surprisingly good. They went old school when they made it. They put it on a copier and hit 150%. It they went, whoop, it and is they pulled big. out the pieces. It's big. I think the handle's over five inches long. So yeah. It, yeah. it ends up being like a nine inch uh, for sure. flipper. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty nice. Uh, follow us on uh, YouTube. We can't say that enough. A lot of you watch yeah. on YouTube. Uh, tell, start telling people about that. We, we need to grow that out some just some more. I still say we do an Instagram only feature. Like once a month, and we don't tell anybody, and they get a separate thing. You can do whatever you want to do. This studio is available. You don't pull me on the air. Do you think we would ever get to a night? <laughs> I would distract myself with something stupid I watched. I watched Evil Dead recently. Good use of an axe in that movie. Mm -hmm. And lots of. You know what's filmed in Morristown? Are you on crack? I'm just saying. <laughs> 82, Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell, Evil Dead, <sighs> filmed in Morristown, like an hour down the road. Do you know what was not filmed in Morristown? The 112.2 thousand people that now follow us on Facebook. They may have been here I don't know. But they were there, and 112.2 <laughs> thousand of you, and 4,000 inside the uh, SMKW Army Facebook group. We have to decide a giveaway, and since you guys want it, do it. We'll do the Rough Rider Micro. <laughs> I want an action shot. And yes, and let's do the hashtag as, oh, it's so cute. There we go. Hashtag, oh, oh it's so oh, cute. Oh, it's so cute is what it's going to be there. That is the Rough Rider Micro, I cute believe. Cute with a C or a Q? Oh, my God. With a C. <laughs> We're going to do it with a K today, like Kendra and Kalia. Or cool. K-E-W-L. Cool. Boo. Anything else <laughs> before I wrap this all the way up? Guys, it's been another episode of Guys Talk Knives. Thank you for watching this. Make sure you're sharing it with your friends. Telling people that we come on every Tuesday, every Thursday, whether Jason is here or not. Oh. You might give me get just me sitting here doing a thing. Eventually, you're going to go on vacation, and I'm going to do this by myself. I'm just going to drag somebody out of the showroom. I'm, I'm going to issue a challenge right now for Tuesday of next week. I'm going to issue a challenge to Jonathan in the back to not get fooled. Not once. <laughs> not get something? once. I can hear him what laugh. Is he, what does he win? What does he win? Um, I don't know what he wins. Give him a condor. A con yeah. Did you see him shooting? New we got new condors coming out soon, uh -huh. like in the next few days. Uh -huh. Did you see him drooling on those? Uh, yes. He had to wipe up the floor of the studio. His BDC is huge. <laughs> Just saying. It's usually a big condor. <laughs> Jonathan has been back there running the board. I'm giving him a hard time because it's fun to give him a hard time. Man, Melina has been dealing Man, with all of you all. Man, huge. Heredity. It happens. Jason's over here laughing it up, yucking it up. 
I'm Andy. You watched a whole other episode of Guys Talk Knives live. <laughs> we will catch you next time. I'm gonna this again. Shirt. My EDC is huge. It's the side of a pocket, and the knife's just sticking out of the top. <laughs>